Welcome to Herbally Yours, an adventure into the world of natural medicine. Here is your host, Dr. Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse who will help you take the leap to ultimate wellness. And greetings. Thank you so much for joining me once again today. This is Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse, and we're here for another edition of Herbally Yours. On the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC, Herbally Yours brings you the latest information about the many facets in the world of natural living. Today, I am happy to have as our guest, Anne Gott. Uh, She is an author. She's written many, many books. And today, we're going to discuss her latest offering called The Enneagram of Eating. Anne is a writer, holistic practitioner, workshop facilitator, and journalist. She's an avid long-term student of the Enneagram and offers workshops for beginners as well as advanced students. She has written 22 books that have been translated. 15 of them have been translated. And they were, of course, a variety of nonfiction genres, including nine self-help books. She writes for lots of publications and is a certified IEQ-9 practitioner and teaches personal growth workshops. Thanks, Thank you so much for joining us today, Anne. That's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Well, you know, this is an interesting uh, concept because I'm sure that most of our listeners actually have no idea what the Enneagram even is, and that's spelled E-N-N-E-G-R-A-M. What does that word even mean? Uh, well, for start, Enya means nine in Greek, and gramos means figure, so it translates as a figure of nine. Um, it's, it's an ancient symbol, but um, with its roots in ancient spiritual wisdom. But more recently, it's been enhanced with modern psychology. So, so how long has end, that whole concept yeah. of, of it been around? The, the actual symbol has been around for a very, very long time. It's only more recently that personality profiles have been ascribed to the system. So one could say that at its very basic level, People might see it as a personality profiling system, but if you do that, you've kind of missed the point because really the work of the Enneagram is not to simply identify your type, but to evolve beyond it. So it gives you unique insight into your own psyche. So knowing your type is only the first step. So if people were interested in Enneagram, what would be the best way to find out more about it? There's quite a lot online. You know, if you go and, and do Google, you'll find a lot. Um, otherwise, there, you know, there, there are lots of books. The Wisdom of the Enneagram was the book I started off with, but there, there are many good books out there. So you could start with a basic introduction book um, or find yourself a good Enneagram teacher. Well, let's go back in time. And talk about your path. What made you interested in just natural living in the first place? I think I had a health shop many years ago. And that's where I think the interest in a more healthy lifestyle grew from. And then after that, I traveled many roads. I did many workshops looked into many things and found a lot of interesting things. But I must say that personally for me in the Enneagram, I found more a deeper level of understanding. And I think in understanding what makes other people tick, it gives you a sense of compassion for them. So in a way, you move from judgment to compassion, if that makes sense. From judgment to compassion. That that's an interesting concept. Now, this, of course, this particular book we're looking at today, the Enneagram of Eating, of course, has to do with food and more like our relationship to food. I would say. Would you say that what is what it's about, rather than specific diet items? Yeah, it's not a diet book. There are enough of those out there. 
what I came to realize is that there, as obviously you know, millions of guides out there, and some of them work for some people. But what I wanted to find, you know, it's a chicken and egg situation. I wanted to find out why people put on weight because I didn't believe they did it for the same reasons. So I wanted to go into that and, yeah, just just understand those things, but also in the book are things like how we entertain, um, our addictions, how we feel about our bodies. So there's, there's a whole lot of information about in general, how we view food, our health, um, exercise, and things like that. Well, that is certainly true, because for some people, um, I'm thinking about a a group that I traveled with once, because I travel quite a bit, and there were people on the group who, when they woke up in the morning, they're making plans about where we're going to have dinner. And I yes. who couldn't, care, I really am totally uninterested in food. Like it never crosses my mind. I just have to eat something healthy now and then. I have to remind myself to. Otherwise, you know, just don't eat. It's not on my mind anywhere. And to me, it was shocking that they would get up in the morning and be planning where they're going to have dinner. They didn't even have their first meal of the day yet and were already planning the last meal of the day. I find that really strange. Well, you see, immediately I'm listening to you and I'm identifying a certain Enneagram type who may well do that because they are the planners. So they like to think ahead um, as to, they like to plan things and then they like to anticipate things. So they, and and, and also they're sometimes called the epicure, the gourmands of of the Enneagram. So that makes complete sense. Um, They get a huge amount of joy out of the anticipation often more so than the actual consumption. But it has to do, you know, I would say that I certainly do plan. I'm a big planner. Every single minute of my life is planned, you know, like right now we're doing a radio show and then I have another radio show after this, et cetera, through the whole entire day. So it's not about planning so much as I'm just not interested in food. It's not something that excites me. I don't go, oh, wow, I want to have this or that. So are there certain Enneagram personalities that would make people adore food while others just finding it simply a need? The answer to that is yes. And also within the Enneagram, it can be divided into many. It's not just the nine main personality types. It can be subdivided into numerous other triads. So for instance, there's what they call the instinctual types, and that would be social, sexual, or one-on-one um, self-preservation. So your self-preservation types are more likely to be more interested in food than, say, your one-on-one or sexual types. So you could look at it like that, or you could look at it for certain specific Enneagram types. So you might say that... Um, Type 1, who are the idealistic, principled, orderly, punctual, perfectionistic um, people in the Enneagram, they don't tend to be gluttons when it comes to food because it's not the right thing to do. It's not correct. And they like to follow those rules. So it's less likely that, say, they would put on weight than some of the other types where they, I mean, for instance, the twos, which are... um, they love to help, they're caring, they need to be needed, they're people-pleasing, they can't stop doing stuff for you, they may comfort eat. So food becomes, and they often eat sweet food, so food becomes a way to feel or to compensate for the love they feel they're not getting. Well, I'd like to remind you that you are listening to Herbally Yours on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. I'm Ellen Kamai, the natural nurse. And today, my guest is author Anne God, and we're talking about her latest book, The Enneagram of Eating, How the Nine Personality Types Influence Your Food, Diet, and Exercise Choices. And Anne, I heard you say one word that certainly triggers interest in many people, especially as we approach holiday times here, and that is about weight gain versus maintaining a a good weight. Absolutely. And I think certain of the Enneagram types are more prone 
to weight gain for different reasons. Um, even things like stress is known to, uh, to affect your ability to, to gain weight. And simply because some types are more stressed or inclined to stress than others, that could also be a trigger. Um, some may have a disconnected view from their body. So, for instance, nines, type nines, often don't really connect with themselves. Um, and they, they, they're the, one of the anger types, but they're also known as a peacemaker. They don't want to express the anger because if you do, that wouldn't create the peace that they're after. So they almost have to stuff down their anger with food. So um, it's a numbing to themselves, and that results in a disengagement. They don't realize when they're full because they're not really feeling what's going on inside them. If, um, that makes sense. So they can become overweight um, without really even caring or realizing it if they're not integrated. Well, I know in your book you talk about each of the nine personality types. And I guess once you figure out what you are, I guess sort of like with astrology also, then there's a propensity to go to one extreme or another or be balanced, depending on the personality type that you are. And this can also reflect on your ability to stick with an exercise program. Absolutely. I mean, there's some types that really are not interested or they will follow an exercise program if they do it with a buddy, but it's more about having a friend or some will do it because they enjoy the banter of being with a team. Some will do exercise because they love that juiced up feeling of beating an opponent, of driving them into a ground. Some will do it because they want their own personal success. They want to shine, if you like. Others, like type 5, who are very cerebral, tend to be less interested in sport because, it, unless it's bird watching, they love bird watching, but it tends to interfere with the project that they're working on or busy with at that moment. And they don't really think it's that important. So how does somebody discover which of the nine Enneagram types might most closely match them? For some people, it's obvious. It just jumps out at them straight away. For other people, it's a longer journey. And the point is all of the Enneagram types, to some extent, are in all of us as we move more towards integration. So we kind of take on aspects of all the Enneagram types. But if you, know, the, 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 if you can read books, um, in this particular book of mine, there is a fun test at the back that will give you maybe an inclination as to what your type might be. Um, there are very sophisticated online tests you can do. Some of the tests are more successful than others, but it gives you a good point to start from. And you may find in time that maybe that wasn't my point, my, my, my actual type, but in thinking I was for a while and in reading about it, I learned a lot about that particular type. So, um, as I say, and your friends and colleagues are excellent because they see things in you that you don't see. So <clears throat> you might have an idealized version of yourself and your friends, family, and colleagues will see some aspect of yourself that you're completely blind to. Jahari's window, I think, like that. So would this be a system that is better used in groups so that you can get feedback for, about those things that you may not be able to see within yourself? I think I like to hope that many people reading the book, as they go through the chapters, will identify colleagues, friends, and family and hopefully see themselves because Hopefully the information is specific enough that you would know, oh, yes, I'm always late. I battle with that. Well, that rules out a few of the types. Or I'm always punctual, so that moves you more in the direction of, for instance, a type 1 or possibly a type 6. So the, the book should give you a pretty clear idea. Um, but at the end of the day, it's 
sometimes we are very blinded to ourselves. And so it does take a bit of work to get there. And as I say, with other people, I mean, when I do workshops with people, some people just see themselves straight away. 